Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of chemistry, we shall discuss about periodic classification of elements. So moving on to periodical classification of elements. The elements are the basic units of all types of matter. We know it. Right? So in 1800 only 31 elements are known by our scientists but 1865 63 elements were known. But at present as on February 28, 2018 we have 118 elements known in the periodic table. So of them the recently discovered elements are man-made. So we have both natural as well as man-made in the periodic table. So remember we have 118 elements as on date. Okay, Some are man-made and some are natural majority are natural and some are man-made okay next moving on to properties of substance we know every substance has unique or characteristic properties these properties are classified in two categories physical properties and chemical properties so what do you mean by this and what is the difference between them we shall see in now so physical properties are those properties which can be measured or observed without changing the identity of the or the composition of the substance so compositions or the identity may not be changed in a physical property. Color, order, melting point, boiling point, these are the physical properties. They doesn't change the identity or the composition of the substance. But what does chemical property do? They change the chemical identity of a substance. Acidity, basicity or reactivity like that. They change the chemical properties. Okay, these are called the chemical properties. So chemical properties are involved in chemical reaction and physical properties are changed in physical changes. Okay, and chemical properties are uh, involved in chemical changes. Moving on to law of triads. So before we'll uh, see the modern periodic table, what is law of triads? So tri means three, we know it, right? So how three is involved in this, we shall see. The German chemist named John Dobriner in 1800s, he was the first to take up the classification of various elements officially. Okay, by 1829, he noted a similarity among the physical and chemical properties of several groups of three elements. That's why it's called as law of triads. So three elements were having the same properties. He has noted in 1829. Okay, so in each case, he noticed that middle element of each of the triads had an atomic weight halfway between the atomic weight of the other two. Suppose if I take three elements, the second element had the atomic weight which is equal to 1 plus 3 by 2. Okay, this was noted by Dobriner who has given the law of triads. Okay, moving on, the elements which we have. So what are the elements we uh, Dobriner has noted? He has noted about lithium, sodium and potassium. Okay, if I say 23 is equal to approximately equal to 39 plus 7 by 2. Like that, for calcium, strontium, barium, chlorine, bromine, iodine, these are the Dobriner triads you have to remember. Okay, so they have the atomic, the middle element have the atomic element of the average of the other two. This was noted by Dobriner, who was given the law of triads. Okay, moving on to the next law, that is law of octaves. Octave me, oct means 8. How 8 is related we shall see now. So English chemist John Alexander Newlands in 1865 arranged the elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights and noted that every 8th element had the property similar to the first element like we have the 7 musical notes in music right. Sare, Gama, Pada, Ni and next the 8th element is Sa again. Like that he noted the law of actives similar to music okay. Every 8th note resembles the first in the octaves of music. It seemed to be true only for elements up to calcium, that is atomic number 20. Okay, up to 20 only it was true. Next, so he has noted this, lithium. Again, lithium has the same property that of sodium. Sodium has again that of potassium. So he noted up to only calcium, beryllium for magnesium, calcium boron, aluminium, carbon, silicon, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, sulfur, fluorine and chlorine. They are having the same properties. Okay, this was noted by Newlands and it is called as law of octaves. Moving on to the modern periodic table. 
So in 1969, Russian chemist called Dmitry Mendeleev published a modern periodic table with 63 elements. Okay, Mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns in order of their increasing atomic weights in such a way that elements with similar properties occupied the same vertical group. So same vertical group will have same properties. Suppose if I take gases, all are gases, all are metals like that. Okay, and they have the increasing atomic weights. Okay, so same vertical group means same almost similar properties. He left the gap under aluminium and gap under silicon and called those elements as eka aluminium and eka silicon. Mendeley predicted not only the existence of gallium and germanium. Later this eka aluminium was gallium and eka silicon was germanium but also describe some of their general physical properties before they were actually discovered. Okay, moving on, this is a modern periodic table. You have to remember the atomic weights and in which group they are placed. Sometimes they will ask in the fourth period and the fourth uh, row, which is the element present. So I have to remember the modern periodic table. I will show you the what is the modern periodic table. Okay. So, modern periodic law, it can be stated that the physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. And long form of the periodic table of the elements is the most convenient and widely used periodic table. And the horizontal rows which Mendeleev seri called series called period. So, horizontal rows are called periods and vertical Columns are called groups. Remember this. Horizontal rows are called periods and vertical columns are called as groups as well as as far as Mendeleev is concerned. And elements having similar outer electronic configuration in their atoms are arranged in vertical columns. So similar, suppose if uh, valence, what do you mean by valence electron? Suppose if I say 1s1. One one. Suppose if an electron, another has 2s2. 2s1. So the valence electron is the outer shell electron is 1 in both the cases. So they will be arranged in the similar vertical column. Okay, like that. All there are, we have 7 periods and the period number corresponding to the highest principle, quantum number n. The first period contains 2 elements. We shall see in the periodic table. Okay, this is a modern periodic table with the modern periodic law. Okay, so you can see they have their similar properties. So hydrogen and lithium has the valence electron one in their outer shell. So that's why they are all arranged in one shell. So these are called as alkali metals. Hope you can see clearly. And these are called alkali earth metals. And these are called transition metals. Okay, this 57, 58 to 71 are called lanthanides. And uh, from 90 to 1 or 3 are called actinides. Okay. And these yellow are called as metalloids or semiconductors. Boron, silicon, germanium, tellurium, polonium, all these are called as metalloids or semiconductors. Okay. These are gases. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, all these are gases and non metals. Okay, white one are called as non metals and lead one call, called as halogens. Okay, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, all these. And these are called the noble elements helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radium, all are called as noble gases. Okay, hope you are clear with these. So sometimes there may be a question which is the uh, in the fourth group and fourth period. Okay. So that is called as titanium. Okay. So you must be thorough with the modern periodic table. So this is all for this session from the periodic classification of elements. We shall meet in the next sessions. Thank you so much.